Here's a really short lecture exploring the idea of the common origins of these four ethical concepts. Utilitarianism, Kant and the rights approach, justice and fairness, and the social contract. What do they have in common? In fact, they have something very simple in common. Utilitarianism, there are people who have tried to sell this as a very good ethical concept, but the only application of act utilitarianism is in cost-benefit ratios and things where you attempt to justify an action based on examination of the factors, costing them out, and somehow attempting to rationalize happiness with pain or benefit and loss with an attempt to perhaps explore on a neutral way whether this action should be taken, but many times to substantiate some action that perhaps already is in mind, like an urban renewal project or some kind of another public effort where it seems to be a good idea and we can generate some numbers and some rationalization to actually carrying it out. Rural utilitarianism, however, is much simpler. And we basically originate a rule for the action. And if the action of the rule, if done by everybody, is good, then the act is ethical. Kant and the rights approach we come up with rules called maxims that must be universal. If everybody applies the rule and the rule is not self-contradictory and it produces something that is a benefit, then the rule is ethical. But the second proviso, it must treat everyone as an end. That means it must look out for everyone's benefit. Everybody must benefit from this, not just somebody at the expense of another person. Justice and fairness well, fairness basically means we treat everybody the same, which is pretty much what the second statement here indicates. Treat everyone the same in the same circumstance. It's okay to punish people if we punish everybody in the same way for the same misdeed. And we ought to pay everybody the same for the same amount of work. The social contract is a little more detached from the common base I'm going to point to. It's basically that you've accepted an agreement just by living in the society in which you live. That the society has provided to you benefits of stability and this functioning interdependence we have in civilization. We don't all grow all our own food and make all our own clothes and be completely self-sufficient. We depend on others and we need an organized society to do that. You've benefited from that by living in the society, therefore you owe the society which is really everybody else besides you in that group, you owe the obligation to obey the rules of that society. So everyone must do this, or presumably they would have had the option to leave. What do these approaches have in common? I would say, very simply, what they have in common is they're all various versions of the Golden Rule, with some embellishments and some additional thinking. An awful lot of ink has been spilled describing these other approaches, but basically if you want to simplify your thinking about this, it all comes down to something as simple as the golden rule. You do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This embodies fairness. This embodies everybody's benefit. This embodies treating everybody the same way. And even if you expand your thinking to the idea that society is really composed of everybody else, there's this mutuality of obligation between you and the group in which you have lived and benefited. Presumably, everybody in that group acting in the same way of treating others as they would have themselves treated results in perhaps the maximally optimal society in terms of its functioning. The only reason I present this is it's awfully easy to get lost as we talk about all of these different ethical concepts and the frameworks they produce for judging whether an act is ethical or not. I think it simplifies things a bit if we look at the essence of each of these and realize that they really are variations of something as simple as the golden rule which has been originated in many different societies throughout human history.